Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 3 of Ark Scorched Earth. We are here on Grimcore's Scorch Punk server. I'm, I'm gonna get it right eventually. Oh, who'd you think you were trying to fool, Donald Trump? Those glasses aren't gonna, aren't gonna help. <laughs> yeah, we added the, the glasses to Donald Trump just because we thought it would look amazing. And it does. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so it's actually been quite a while since we recorded the last episode. Things have definitely happened. I guess I should bring you guys up to date on the changes around this place. One of the biggest ones, I don't know whether you'd notice or not, but uh, Chair Table Window has spent quite a lot of time and she has finished this wall around our base here. We need a name for this base. I don't know what to call it. I keep calling it our base. It needs something a little bit more appropriate than that. But, um, yeah, it goes all the way around. Uh, all of this stuff here. Oh, finally, that heat wave is over. Honestly, the, the number of weather events that happen in this are ridiculous. At least the heat wave is not too bad. Once you've got decent gear, you can usually just work through it. Um, but yes, that's good. The, the issue we were having was we noticed that Donald Trump, for example, could just walk straight over the wall. Uh, and so if a T-Rex turned up or something, it just wasn't going to do what it was supposed to do. But she told me that parts of this were an absolute nightmare, and I can very much believe that. Trying to fit it to the shape of this, this cliff here. Um, and you know how Ark is and the way that things snap together, or rather that they don't. But I think she did a really good job. We've got, got the wall set up now. Uh, we've got... Oh, we tamed a couple of kangaroos here, and we were quite imaginative with the the way we named them, as you can see. We had to tame them both. We tamed one, um, and it was a level 88, and we were it was knocked out. We were, like, feeding it all the, the mushrooms and stuff. And uh, there was another one hopping around outside. It was its mate. They were mate boosts, and it just wouldn't leave it alone. It was, was hopping around, didn't want to leave its side, so we didn't want to separate them. So basically, we tamed the other one as well. They were actually both exactly the same level, and that's how we knew we were they were a pair. So we had to had to keep them together, so that's what we did. Uh, what else? What else? Oh yeah, we've got a Fiomia here. We grabbed that from the other island. Those things are great for getting poop. For, for fertilizers. The chair table window's been going crazy with... Ooh, can I land here? Yeah, just about. Going crazy getting fertilizer for our crops. Um, these things are pretty much full. You can see the crops are growing nicely in our greenhouse here. Everything's... Whoa, some weird graphical things happen with these crops sometimes. I don't know what causes that. Uh, but yeah, these things are growing pretty nicely. All, all fertilized and irrigated. Uh, what's in here? Yeah, there you go. Some spare fertilizer. And I think if we go out this back door here. Yeah, there's some more stashed in here. We're running out of space. We've got too much fertilizer. Uh, close the door. Let's go back out here. Um, let's see. We, I mean, we've been going through absolutely tons of uh, materials trying to build stuff. So... This wall was built. Oh, there's a little raptor down there. You are not allowed to be so close to our base. Let's take care of you while we talk. Level 8? Wow, that shouldn't take too long. Um, yeah, tons and tons of, like, that clay stuff and wood and thatch and all kinds of materials. Building this and building you what I'm going to show you in the next segment. Um, I just wanted to show you the way we easy way we discovered of getting those kinds of resources. So, for example, say you want some wood. You can probably tell by what's in my hot bar there. We've been using like thorny dragons and uh, mozzarella topses to get us the cactus and thatch and everything. Turns out there's like a miracle tool. We got this from a uh, like one of the drops, probably a red one. Honestly, it's a pretty pretty good one. A journeyman chainsaw. Um, just fire away. And this is one tree. 276 wood from one tree. That is so much more than you'll get even from like a high level thorny dragon. And I don't even have any points, uh, where is it, in melee damage. So I think if you've put points into melee damage, you can actually get even more than that. It's absolutely crazy. But that's not all. <laughs> Let me go over this side. I'll show you what else it can do. Um, it's sort of like a the only tool you'll ever need if you're, you're trying to build. Oh, come on. I really need a faster Argentavis. This guy is doing pretty well. He's served us well, but honestly, I, I really, really badly want to get like a 120 Argentavis so we can um, like level it up properly. I want to get loads of speed into it for, for taming Quetzals. 
and maybe even taming one of those dragons if we can figure out how to do it. Yep, here we go. There's some cactus. Now these are the little ones. Again, bear this in mind. Let's grab this thing. If I run up to this. 169 cactus sap from one, just one of these little cactuses. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, I'm actually going to drop that cactus because I'm not going to be using it right now. It's just weighing me down. I'll keep the wood because you can never have too much wood. Um, yeah, so lots of back and forth. You can tell how much use this thing has gotten. It runs off of gasoline, by the way. Um, so just make a bunch of that and you should be good to go. But the downside to it, you can look at those repairing requirements right there. 332 polymer. 22 cementing paste, not too bad, 221 metal ingots, and 111 electronics. Yeah, and electronics take metal as well. I think it's something like three silica pearls and one metal bar per electronics. I, I could have that wrong. I haven't made it in quite a while now. Um, but long story short, we needed metal. We needed an absolute ton of metal, and that's something that we've been lacking. And that's actually what we've spent most of the last few days working on. Chair Table Window and I getting all the resources, making all the parts, ferrying them back and forth. Um, so we're going to head off, and I'm going to show you where we've been getting it. Well, in fact, we haven't actually gotten our first batch yet, but we have built a functional base. It isn't finished yet. Let's see if I can squeeze through this little gap here. I really love this map. I think they did an awesome, awesome job with it. Um, oh, yeah, further down that ravine, chair table window actually found a cave, too, and I think we're going to be trying to take that on soon. Honestly, I'm terrified. I've never gone through any of the caves in this or in the normal island. I feel like maybe we should be starting with the, the normal island first. It's sort of... Uh, those rocks are kind of blocking it, sort of like directly behind that pillar along that, that ravine. There's like a, a crevice in the wall and you sort of fly in and eventually you get to like a, like a cave. Um, I haven't actually been to it myself yet. I'm looking forward to trying that out. We've got those wolves and I think we might try and attack it with the wolves, but I, I've heard rumors there might be some, some bats in there. Uh, Mally and her husband have checked it out already and they've reported bats, so maybe we'll have to take our Argentavis and see if we can squeeze those in and give it a go. But yeah, here we go. We're getting close to our raw material mining base now. So there's two of these platforms sort of on this side of the map. There's one on that side. You can sort of see it in the distance there, the other side of the green beacon. And there's one on this side too. They're very, very similar to each other. They have got metal rocks. You can see one just down there to our to our left, feel like a tour guide now. On the, the left, <laughs> but just popping into existence, you can now see this thing. So I prom kept promising we would show you our oil pumps. So let's start with that. We've got two here, they're right next to each other. Um, and this whole plateau is just littered with these oil deposits. Um, and I think the other one was as well. And that's one of the other cool things about this map is there are so many places for people to build. Uh, we've only got like a few people on this server, so we're going to be good for resources for the rest of our lives, I think. But if you open this up, it's been running for a while, but we have got more oil than we know what to do with, seriously. Um, and the other one is just as full as this one is. Let's give you a quick, quick fly through. So, I have also seriously overdone the size of this place, I've realized. There's the other oil pump. We've got... One mozzarella tops and our, I think that's twisted, twisted ankylo right there, our good ankylosaurus. I had to ride them the slow way all the way from our base along the ravine, along around the side of this plateau, and there's like a way up over there. Um, yeah, I kind of started this. It's not finished yet. It's a little bit too square for my taste, but I guess that's kind of the point. It's a factory, right? It's not supposed to be all, all pretty and stuff, but if we go inside... Wow, that freaked me out a bit. I thought there was a T-Rex coming to get us. If I head in... In fact, let's do the top floor first. If I can get over this stinking bone. So the top floor is separate from the, the bottom floor. You go in and there's like this, this walkway around the top. Stop shaking the camera! Ugh. Those things, honestly. He's going to be lunch for our birds later, I think. Yeah, you can sort of see down. You can see what I've been up to down there. Um, and there's like a door that leads out to this little balcony where we can see our, our oil pumps. 
that was okay, and then the inside of here is pretty much the same, and this is mostly empty. I think we've pretty much got an entire building here which we aren't going to need to use. Uh, I misjudged how much space is going to be required, what you going to do? <laughs> we'll find some use for it, don't worry. Uh, and then just climb up here and you've got like roof access. Uh, I might actually make a little hut up here to put the beds in instead of just in the middle of the factory floor. A little, little workspace for while we're, we're working away here. Um, we need to hook this up with electricity. We want to get a generator here and, you know, have lights and preparing for, um, if I ever get to a high enough level, being able to make the automated ore processing. I am up to level 75, which I was really proud of. It took a long time to get to that, that level, but... We still have a long way to go. If I scroll down with our engrams here. Yeah, level 80 is the automated cooking. And then I think somewhere, there you go, 85 is going to be the automated ore processing. So we have another 10 levels. The amount of XP you require is going up dramatically. We need to get up to 112,000 just to hit level 76. So, I kind of didn't feel too bad about spending the time making this the manual way. I think it's going to be a long time before we can actually um, build the, the high-tech machinery. Um, our XP gaining rate has been boosted on this server. I think it's up to something like 10 times. And I thought that was really high until I got to this stage. Now I think, honestly, it's probably about right. Just because it should take a lot of work to get that machinery. And it's still going to take a lot of work to get that machinery. Uh, but yeah, just got some storage boxes in here. Got tons and tons of mortal mortars and pestles. I've been using these to make spark powder. Because um, we need a ton of it back in the other base. And uh, yeah, this is the next one. when I get some more flint. And these are not all full, but we're making good progress. I've got all of these set up, so there's three stacks of metal in one, two, three, four, how many did I fill? Five, six, six of them are full and ready to go. So that's six, um, so it's 300, 600, 1200, 1,800 ingots loaded up and ready to go. So let's get these these lit because it's going to take quite a while to process all of them. Oh, there we go. So I'll let them bird away and then we'll have a nice shipment of metal to, to bring back to the base. Where did I leave... Where did I leave the bird? I've got, oh, this is the one. I thought this was... For some reason I thought this was Encumbered, who I've been using to ferry stuff around. Um... Encumbered and the mozzarella tops, we've been taking them up with Twisted, leaving Twisted up there and just ferrying the metal back and forth. But I have pretty much cleared out. Oh! Oh, and it's respawned. That's fantastic. So I can get another... That what we've gotten I can pretty much get again now of metal. But I cleared out all of these metal rocks. Uh, all the way along this sort of edge. Oh no, they haven't completely spawned in yet. I think I've got to leave it a little bit longer. But it looks like they're respawning at a decent rate. I don't know what Grim has that set to, but... I definitely like that setting. Um, I kind of left it a little while while I got mentally prepared to record, and I've come back, and it seems like a lot of it, if not all of it, has respawned. Yeah, I came all the way around here, gathered all of this, and headed over to this side. There is a downside to working in this area, though, and that is that it is not a very friendly area. Up across in the sky over there near the desert, we keep seeing this, like, fire wyvern flying around, um, which terrifies me. Oh, there you go. There's another oil deposit here. This is what they look like. So there's actually one up on this platform. I kind of wish we'd built the base around this now so we were closer to the metal, but what you gonna do? Yeah, they just look like these kind of rocks with, like, thick, congealed, viscous oil apparently bubbling, but not bubbling around it. I think that looks pretty cool. You just drop one of those oil jacks on top of it. Um, but yeah, the other thing that you get around here, which we have no way of dealing with just yet, are rock golems. They're all over the place. Um, and so I'm kind of scared of getting the, the dinosaurs too close to them, because something like an Ankylosaurus, it's too slow to outrun anything. But I'm kind of learning how to spot these guys. Um, I think, in fact, I think right there, that is a rock golem. And if I'm right, maybe that'll be useful to you guys as well, being able to spot them on sight. They are these 
unusually rectangular, thin, narrow kind of block. So let's get close to this and see what pops out. Nothing? Let's try that again. I'm pretty sure this is one. Yep, there you go, Rock Golem. <laughs> so that's how you spot them. I haven't seen any from other shaped rocks yet, although of course it's possible. So that's my disclaimer. If you walk up to a rock and it didn't look like that and the rock proceeds to murder you, yeah, uh, I don't take any responsibility for that. Proceed with caution, but at least you know if it looks like that, you need to steer clear of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for now. We're gonna, um, I mean, to, to deal with that, we're actually planning on working on this base a little bit more. I think if I can get back over towards it. Where are you? Down here somewhere. You get a lot of drops in this area, too. It's actually really nice to work here if, once you got the equipment. I wouldn't have wanted to start here, for sure. It's, like, scorching hot all of the time. Uh, oh, there it is. There's our base. Not doing too badly at the moment, but it gets seriously hot here, especially in the middle of the day, and plus all those angry things flying around, right? What I think we might do is stick um, a ballista or two on the, the roof of this. If we come under attack, see, there's a raptor there, right, as well. If we come under attack from, like, a wyvern or something, we can just get up on the roof and try and shoot it down or something. Oh, lag spike. Massive lag spike. Er, sorry about that. Um... And also, I think we want to build a wall, like a perimeter wall around this place, just to protect us and our dinosaurs, who we're probably going to be leaving here, from things like the that raptor over there. There's bazillions of raptors. You leave an area, you come back, and it's infested. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, the next thing is pretty much just going to be a waiting game. Getting more metal, processing it, more metal, processing it. We're going to take that back to the base, make an absolute ton of ammunition. Um, I want to make... Like, I want to repair this chainsaw, I want to make another one of those automatic sniper rifles, get tons of, like, ammunition, and maybe next episode we'll try and take on one of those caves, if we can get some, oop, that poor mozzarella tops, it's gone. <laughs> uh, maybe take on one of the caves, or um, maybe try and tame some some other stuff. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna play it by ear. It's taken so long to build this thing. But for now, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I and Karen Smith the Fifth, still Karen Smith the Fifth. This one hasn't died yet. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs>